Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Friday Night Lights edition and I am your co-host Pastor Mark McCoy along with my co-host Pastor Paul McCoy. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We lift you up, dear Heavenly Father, and give you all the glory and honor that is due your name. You're so worthy of the praise. Lord, we just thank you for this technology and we pray over it right now and plead the blood of Jesus, the technology of Facebook and the technology of conference calls. Lord, we just ask you to just have your way this day. Be all that we stand in the need of in the name of Jesus. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that you bless now as we get ready to preach and teach your word, as we get ready to listen and hear your word. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, not to just be hearers of your word, but to also be doers of your word. And then, Lord, we ask you to be true to your promise where two or three are gathered in your name that you would be in the midst. It's in the mighty and sufficient name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone. I forgot to um, do a tag on Facebook. And I'm going to see if I can tag somebody here. All right. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to get my tagging right to share this message. Um, I forgot to tag on the Guiding Light Ministry. Okay, they are properly tagged, and I'll put that down, um, amen. We're going to go to um, uh, Philippians tonight, Philippians chapter, chapter 4. Uh, on last week, we had Pastor Malone from uh, Greater Bethel in Allen, Texas with us, and he did a shotgun of the book of Philippians. He went from, you know, different passages in the scripture. Well, tonight, tonight I want to dig into a passage of scripture uh, found in Philippians, the fourth chapter. And uh, I want to start with the fourth verse. And um, that's where we're going to start. I'm going to start reading there. It says in the fourth verse, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes or surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. So this this passage of scripture has 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 uh, been with me and on me all week long because this this passage of scripture is one of those key passages of scripture that help us uh, to understand the power of God in our lives and and how He can come in into any situation and be there right there for us in in the world where. Uh, uh, where we live and the things that we do from day to day, we have this thing called cause and effect. When there's a cause, for a cause, something happens, then there's an effect. When something is done, there is a result. And so in this cause and effect kind of world that we live in, uh, we have to understand that, that God has the ability to, to, to override, if you will, any effect that was caused by something else. And so when we realize that, that the Lord is there, when we realize that the Lord is at hand, we can come to the, the, the conclusion that God is always there, always on our side, and he can turn any situation around. And with that, with that, we should have an attitude of gratitude. We should be thankful to the Lord. We should, we should, we should, we should be lifting up holy hands, giving him praise, because we know that no matter what's going on in our lives, whatever's going on in our lives, he has the ability. 
to override it. He has the ability to change that situation. And so, so this, this passage of scripture is one of those passages of scripture that help those who are dealing with anxiety and worry. Yes, who are constantly dealing with anxiety and worry. And so the solution to anxiety, the solution to worrying about stuff all the time is, is in three parts. He says, he says, re make your request. He says, don't be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So, so what, what does that say? That said, the, the three things that you need to do is pray and have prayer with supplication, number two, and, 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 and let, and, and with thanksgiving. So prayer, prayer is the most important thing that you can do to deal with anxiety. When you have something that has happened and you are, it has caused you to have a negative effect, but, but you don't have to have a bad attitude about it. You, you can trust that the Lord will make a way out of no way. He told us over in Romans that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. His word tells us that, that the Satan got going around like a roaring lion seeking to whom he may but desire, but, but, but God, Jesus Christ came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. And so in this Philippian passage, we know that Paul, the writer of this letter, is in jail in Rome. And this is a, 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 a letter that he wrote to the church at Philippi, the Philippians. And, and, and it is a, an epistle to them while he's going through a jail sentence, while he's going through all kind of hell. And, and he writes this letter and pens this letter. And here when he gets to that fourth chapter, he says, rejoice. In the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This, this is a time where, where, where you have to, to have to give God, give God all the praise. You, 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 you have to tell your soul, so oh my soul, why are you disquieted within me? Why, why are you going through all of this? Just let's go on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless. His holy name. And see, this is a time that we're living in in America right now because uh, we, we celebrate this, this holiday called Thanksgiving at the end of November. And it is a time we come together where all the families try to get together and we, we go to grandmama house, you know, over the river and through the woods to grandmama house we go and, and, and we, we, we get there and we all eat together and laugh and all of that. But there are some that's there that feel the pressure of being in the presence of their families. There are always some dysfunctional uh, things going on in the family and issues going on. And people have a hard time with the holidays and they're getting all anxious about it. Then we have those who are preparing the meals and, and they get tired and they get stressed and they get anxious. Still, all of this. And God is saying, watch all that anxiety. You, you need to watch it. You, first, you need to first understand you need to be rejoicing in the Lord always. And he says again, rejoice. And then verse 5, verse 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, now we don't talk about this word moderation too much these days in the sense of, of, of Scripture. Uh, uh, people talk about moderation, say you, you, you got to be a moderate drinker. Don't, you know, but, but what does this word moderation really mean? What, what, what is God trying to really get out of this? He, he says, it, it, the, 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 the Amplified Bible says it this way, let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness. Your considerationness, your forbearing spirit. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's what moderation means in this text. That that let your moderation be known on. Let people know you're not selfish. Let let people know that 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 you think more you don't think more highly of yourself than you do of others. Be humble. Uh, uh and it has been said, be humble or you will stumble. And when you when you when you get to that point where you understand and we understand that that God is at hand, He's in control. We can have the proper perspective, and we can have gentleness, as one translation says. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be, be considerate of one another. So in order to enjoy this Thanksgiving holiday that's coming up, be, be gentle and, and respectful to one another and considerate to one another. And then he says in verse 6, be anxious for nothing. Do not fret. Or have anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance. And in everything. Go and pray. We gonna get to that. This word. This word be anxious for nothing. In the scripture. Uh, King, King James version says. Be careful for nothing. This, this word careful. Is. Care and full. Full of care. Be careful. Be full of care for nothing. Be full of care for nothing. See, the reason we can be full of care for nothing, the reason we don't have to be anxious about anything is because we have a God that cares. And he cares about us and we can cast all of our cares upon him. I heard it said this way, you know, when we think about about Jesus uh, and the disciples when they were on the boat and 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 Jesus was down in the boat sleeping and 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 the storm was raging and 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 the, the other disciples evidently were bailing water out the boat and and Jesus was was laying there asleep and they was like, Whoa, Jesus, don't you care? Wake up, wake up, Jesus, don't you care? And Jesus was laying there snoring. Because he, he wasn't full of care. He wasn't worried about a thing. And so he got up. And he turned to the storm and he said, peace, be still. I'm saying to us that, 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 that when we find ourselves getting anxious, when we find ourselves being full of care, we got to turn to Jesus. And we got to let, wake up to Jesus inside of us and speak to our storms and say to our storms, peace, peace, be still. And them storms will be still. So be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. This, this prayer, this prayer, it, it says, tell God what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. And then we have the power. We have the keys to, to, to buy some things and we have the keys to, to unlock some things and whatever we, 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 we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. There's power in our tongue. And, and we can say even to the storm, peace, be still. The thing is, is that, 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 that we fail to realize how powerful our prayers are. There are times in our lives where things are so stormy. The, the, everything is, 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 is rocking and reeling in the storm. 
and, and, and we get we get so bogged down with the problems that 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 it seems as though we can't even call on the name of the Lord and and, 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 and we can't give him praise for what's going on. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had those times where, where things were, were so heavy on you that, that you couldn't praise your way out of it. You, you couldn't praise and, and get a dance or praise and rejoice. It was just heavy on you. And, 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 and that's when you learn that you got to really get down in prayer. And then he says, and with supplication. Meaning that 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 this this supplication means that 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 you're gonna that you're gonna just lay prostrate in the Lord. It, it, it's, it's like Lord, you know where I am. You know what I'm dealing with. You know the situation and the circumstance. You know the cause of it. And Lord, you know how the 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 the, the anxiety in me is rising up because the effect of what's going on. I need you, God. I need you right now. It's not my mother. It's not my brother. But it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. And you do that with, with, with sincere supplication. You, 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 you with, with tears and cries and moans and groans and praying in the spirit to God. And you just lay out prostrate in front of him. That's supplication. But don't just leave it there. He says, also do it with thanksgiving. Yes. See, 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 when you, when you are supplicating, you have a particular situation that, that you are crying out to God for. It's, it's a definite request. You know exactly what you believe you are standing in need of and, and you want God to intervene on that situation. But then, after you have lifted that thing up to God like that, you need to start thanking him. Some have said, you need to thank him in advance. You need to thank him for what he's about to do. You need to thank him for what he's already done. You need to thank him that you even in your right mind right now to be able to call on his name. And you just get to thanking him and thanking him and thanking him and thanking him. Because part of this prayer is, is, is knowing that God will answer your prayer. That God will come through. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Paul when he first went 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 to 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 to, to Macedonia and he got locked up in that jail and him and uh, Paul and Silas were in them jail after they had been beaten. They they didn't mess around. They got to praising God and praying in that bad situation when they had been beat down and and, and God showed up and said surprise. He rocked the whole jail. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life where God has woke up and said, surprise, yeah, because I've been praying about this thing and he's going to show up. He may not come when we want him to, but he's going to always show up on time. Pray. Let your requests be known. Pray. And then here is the promise. The promise is, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That peace, listen to it again, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. It's not my peace. It's not your peace. 
It's not the world's peace. This peace he's talking about is God's peace alone. Peace that the world didn't give to you and the world can't take away. God's peace. It's a peace that passes all understanding. God's peace. It's a peace that will guard your heart and your mind. It's God's peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who died on the cross that we might have peace, who went down into the grave that we might have peace, that rose up out of that grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands that we might have peace, the peace of God which passes all understanding. That peace will guard your hearts and your mind through Jesus Christ. In all of this, when God gives you that peace, he's speaking to your storm right now. And he's saying to your storm, peace, be still. You ought to be grateful. You ought to have an attitude of gratitude because you realize, as Paul says in this text, and he goes on for a chapter, and I'm not going to go deep into it. I'm just going to, you know, walk through it a little bit. He just says, you know, think on these things. Think on those things that are, are noble. Think on those things that are pure. Think on those things that are good. Meditate on the things that are praiseworthy. And these things you learned and received and saw in me, Paul says, then do. And the God of peace will be with you. Paul said, I, I've learned no matter what state I'm in, whether I have a little or whether I have a lot, I've learned to be content. Why? Because I got the peace of God. And I know because I got the peace of God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and he will, oh hallelujah, supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So I go all the way back to where I started. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Yes, rejoice. Don't be anxious for anything. Rejoice. For the Lord is at hand. Rejoice. You got to pray about everything with, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. Again, I say rejoice. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind. Again, I say rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. I hope this familiar passage, just talking about it, has blessed someone today to, 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 to let go of the anxieties that, that have captured you, to, 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 to learn how to really just get down to the, to the nitty gritty on your knees and pray. God has encouraged you with this word. I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed to be a part of that. Now, for those that don't know God as their personal Savior and Lord. Before I end the recording, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation with you. And so please pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life, that I might be able to rejoice and have an attitude 
of gratitude for everything that you have done, doing, and are going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Those on Facebook, we say good night to you. We're going to go to the conference call where we're going to have a discussion and we're going to prayer. If you want to join us on the conference call, the number is 910-218-0531. Um, for those who are listening for the first time, this is the Friday Night Lights edition of the Guiding Light Ministry. And we'll be here every Friday night at 8 o'clock uh, Central Time. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God watch over you. Amen.